there's an opportunity that exists in so many drawings, but over and over and over, I see it not being taken advantage of, not being used to bring out all of its potential to really enhance, if not make, the drawing. What is this opportunity that's so much neglected? Well, I think it's the foliage. Obviously, there are some people who trees are what they draw, so I'm not talking to them. But for many people who, like myself, came through a pathway of urban sketching of buildings, architecture, scenes, streets, trees were often just a very minor part of what we were drawing, if at all. And for that reason, often we didn't have to end up spending much time or we didn't feel we needed to spend much time working out exactly what's the best way to draw trees, to draw foliage. We found that we could just, well, fudge them a bit. With a few lines, we could create enough of a tree effect that it was quite clear what we were looking at. And then we could move on to what we wanted to draw, the architecture. And I certainly love drawing architecture. But so often, the architecture is surrounded in some way at some point by trees. And I think the big mistake is that we think of these trees, we think of shrubs, foliage of any type, as not being the main event, not being what the drawing's about, and therefore we see them as a far less important support act, not worthy of the same time, attention, creative thought, processing, as the parts of the scene, particularly if it's the architecture or the people, that attracted our attention and made us want to draw it. And I find this is probably the reason why often when I do see the foliage in a drawing where there's lots of different foliage, it all ends up being drawn looking pretty much the same because it's really been drawn as a generic substance, as, as generic objects. Trees, foliage, yeah, this is how we draw, or rather this is how I draw trees and draw foliage. And we just put it wherever we have foliage in our reference. Now, I thought this was a great subject, a great scene for exploiting some of the possibilities of foliage to highlight just how valuable foliage in a scene is and why we should really try and push the opportunities that we can get from drawing foliage as far as we can, as much as possible. This is a lovely piece of architecture. If we enjoy drawing architecture, we'll certainly be attracted to drawing this. It's actually a porch on a much larger building, which is totally out of sight. And there isn't really a clear way to capture this little scene without getting all of this foliage. So we either draw the foliage or we pretend it's not there. The foliage is going to be a part of it. Now we still want, at the end of the drawing, we still want the architecture to stand out and to be clear. But in effect, this lovely green garden setting is also part of what it's about. The lovely contrast between full sunlit areas and shaded areas and shaded areas of various colours, creating a whole range of values is also a very important part of this scene, even more so because we're taking all the colour out. And so it will be the value alone of the effect that we create with our lines that will help us navigate the lights, the darks, the colours. At this point, I'm wanting to make sure I get the architecture happily settled. I started probably in the same spot most people would start, that front lower wall that we see. And from there, I basically move out in all directions, positioning things by aligning with what I've already drawn, such as the left-hand gatepost, and then going to the left to that side fence, and then coming up with the various levels of foliage and paying attention to where in relation to that left post that I'd drawn, where do these various levels of foliage come in 
and line up from the left. And now I'm starting to apply values, values by creating various tonal effects by hatching, by drawing a lot of small lines close together. The thing about values is we can't really tell at the start how dark we want a dark area to be or how light we want it to be. It's the sort of thing which, as we do our drawing, as we work the values around the whole drawing, we appreciate what's going to work best. At the very end, some of the last strokes you see me do, I darken that front left hand gate post. I have about three goes making it darker because I felt that while I didn't want it as dark as the really dark leaf values, I saw that the drawing benefited from something just a little bit more substantial down in the front, just to anchor slightly visually the scene. In this, there are a lot of variation of foliage. There's a number of clipped hedges, low box hedges, some of them in full sunlight, some of them in full shadow, and some of them half and half. And so these are all things we need to work out. How do I draw this hedge as opposed to this tree? And how do I draw this tree that's really close compared to this tree that's far away in terms of the foliage? Or this tree that has larger leaves than this tree that has smaller leaves, even if you were to put them side by side. So when we work out what marks are we going to use to create our foliage, these are some of the issues that we let tumble through our brain as we start to make choices and start to explore marks on the paper. We can't start to draw the trees credibly though until we've actually in our mind separated what tree is what. What am I seeing that's front lit? What am I seeing that's back lit? What am I seeing through other branches? What's the tree and what's the tree behind? It can be hard to distinguish them. If it's impossible to distinguish them, then it probably doesn't really matter for our drawing. But I think we need to give it every chance to work out what's what. And I'm drawing now a small liquid amber tree that really I have to create through the negative spacing of the dark shadows behind. And then there's another, another shrub or large bush to the right that, had, that is closer and had a very, very different um, pine tree-like effect the way its foliage hung and so I was trying to create that different effect because we really have a circling frame and encircling frame of foliage around this architecture and so I want to make sure that uh, I can retain as much of the interest through the variety of foliage as well as values. Now the silhouette edges are particularly important with foliage where we have the sky behind them, as so often is the case with foliage, we get this very well lit or back lit edge. And if we're close enough to the tree, and if the leaves are distinctive and large enough for that distance, then we get a distinct pattern, both from the shape of the leaf and the way the leaf is bunched with other leaves and the way they hang on the tree as well. It creates very different effects in the silhouette and so I want to put marks on my paper that reflect that. I'm not drawing a line around the outside of the tree. That would be a very cartoon-like approach that would probably end up with a very flat effect. I'm putting marks to create an effect of light and dark and color and form. And so the challenge, if I don't want to waste my opportunity from having foliage in my scene, the challenge is how do I do that? Now, I've actually switched from a 0.3 millimeter pen that I've been using to a 0.5 millimeter pen. And hey, if you're finding this interesting or at least enjoying watching the drawing come to life, then please hit the like button. And if you know friends who draw, then why not share the video with them as well? Especially if you know they're not keen on drawing trees. And in real time, this drawing took me about 65 minutes, just over an hour to draw. Foliage often is a time commitment and I knew when I began this drawing that even though the architecture was quite simple 
And even though the way I would be drawing the trees in my mind was quite simple, simple in the case of straightforward, I knew what I was going to do, how I was going to do it, I still knew that it would take a lot of time. And we need to be prepared for that with whatever we draw. If I don't have the energy, alertness, interest to do a good job of a drawing I'm about to do, then what I'm going to learn is how to draw not so well. I'm going to learn how to draw without caring as much. I'm going to learn how to draw without paying much attention. And I'll get the sort of drawing you get when that's what you're learning to do. Because whatever we keep doing, we get better at. And so if I don't have the energy to put into drawing foliage to get the effect that I'd like to get, then I'm better off leaving foliage for another day. I've gone back to the 0.3 millimeter pen now for this left hand side. It certainly is easier to use sketch marker for the values, marker ink, various shades, but sometimes we don't have that. And so it's a great skill to learn to, to use line for all of our values, but it also creates very interesting graphics. So now I'm starting to look at the details. The architecture has lined up approximately with the, with the foliage. There are a few things that don't quite line up as ex exactly as precisely as I would have liked, but nothing that I think is particularly noticeable. The thing with a freehand ink drawing is that you don't get any second chances. Every line or mark you put on the paper is there at the end, which is why you'll often see me putting spots, dots on the, on the paper. They're positioning marks. They're where I think the line will end or start or where the next object will come up to. But it helps me, helps me place. And then I look again at that distance, look at the reference and think, mm, does it look just right? A little bit too, too much, a little bit not enough, not close enough, and I adjust it then when I do the line or the mark or whatever it is I'm trying to do it. Let's me be more confident and get it more correct when I actually put the line in. And any, any dots that aren't needed are just still there at the end and I've, I've never found them a problem. So this is the bit where I'm now working on the values in this lower section, getting towards the end. And of course, if you'd like to have a go, taking full advantage of all the challenges of foliage in this scene, you'll find this reference photo on my channel community page. And why not have a go drawing it yourself? Put into practice the challenge of the leaves. How do I create marks to capture the effect of not trees, not leaves, but this particular tree, these particular leaves in this particular sunlight or lack of it, with this pen at this distance. These are all the, the things that we need to crunch in our mind. Choose the best pen and then start to use the best marks that we can think of to create those effects for that tree. We're not drawing a tree, we're creating the effect of a tree from what a tree actually looks like. And now we'll get to see how nice and clean and sunshiny all of our dark values and all of our foliage has made. And I think the architecture does stand out looking nice and crisp in the sunshine. And it's really the fact that I've been able to put so much line work in the foliage and comparatively very little on the architecture to make it look even more sunshiny. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope you enjoyed watching me draw this little historic part of Sydney. But I hope also that the challenge of not wasting the opportunities that foliage gives us to include and to create in our drawings, serious thought. And I have 40 or 50 videos on all aspects of drawing trees and foliage, um, bushes, shrubs, grass, all things, all things growable. So if you're interested in those, then check out my how to draw a tree playlist. And I hope that foliage can even go from being the least enjoyable part of a scene to a real opportunity to make the scene sing. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, 
foliage or not, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.